reinstalled this. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling recharged. I think it's good. Oh, I love this one. I love the solar panels. Should we install this? Stop goofing around. We have some work to do. So we decided to go with the flexible solar panels. As you can see, they bend a little bit. This kind of helps with odd shapes up on top of the roof uh, that the Ford Transits have, as well as keeping things a little bit more stealth and not adding a whole lot of weight um, to create a more strenuous process with uh, a roof rack. One of the drawbacks of flexible panels, however, is that they um, radiate a lot of heat. So if you apply it um, you know much like any other solar panel to the surface itself it's going to transfer a lot of that heat to the top of the van so we decided um, to look up some videos and we found RV with Tito I think it was Brian uh, had a really good idea to make a mount for the flexible solar panels up on the roof that kind of helps uh, you know add some airflow to wherever it's heating the roof um, and can keep your solar panels lasting longer and keep the temperature of the van cooler. Um, so that's how we're going to deal with that kind of drawback of flexible solar panels. So sit tight, we're going to explain to you what materials you need uh, in this process and I'm going to explain the process that we went through because we ordered um, some Renogy panels. Um, we got four 100 watt flexible solar panels and um, I ran into a little bit of trouble trying to do it straight from Brian's method with RV from Tito, probably because he has a different um, solar panel, but I'll let you know the steps that we went through to um, kind of make our own setup. We got the T-Track rails um, in the video with RV uh, with Tito. They used some hex nuts um, to fit easily in here um, and some hex bolts to mount um, the solar panel into the tracks. Um, for us, it was a little bit different because the size of the holes on our panels were smaller. Um, so we had to adjust and we'll go through what we did specifically for the Renogy 100 watt flexible panels. This part is the lattice end cap. We found this at Home Depot as well. We'll put a link to all these things in the description below. But these come in um, 48 inch um, or 24 inch two packs. Um, so, you know, this one right here, we had to cut into two and you have a little bit left over to fit the ends of one panel. Um, but I ended up needing um, four of these long strips, but they're relatively cheap. So this polycarbonate uh, plastic material can uh, be picked up at Home Depot. That's where I found it. Um, basically, it's one big um, 96 inch by 48 inch um, piece, so like a strip of plywood and you have to cut up each you know to match your solar panels um, we had four of them so we had enough for four 100 watt panels from that one big sheet um, and this is how we're going to cut it which i'll explain a little bit later to allow for some more airflow as you can see there's some holes in the side of it um, that run all the way through so this will allow you know more airflow so this is some of the hardware that we got um, we had to, like I said before, make our own setup for getting the panel secured in there. Um, the holes were too small to fit um, whatever someone can do with like a rich solar panel or a different name brand. Um, so we actually had to create um, our own little um, screws out of machine and screws. So one of the reasons we chose these panels was because um, we didn't have to drill anything through the roof. Um, everybody's got to put their solar cables through the roof, but we didn't have to bolt anything in specifically. We're just going to use some uh, Sikaflex. Uh, RV with Tito, they used a Turnabon, but I didn't really have that lying around and I had Sikaflex, um, so I wasn't really scared of putting it on the roof. And um, it's a little bit less of a permanent solution where you don't have to waterproof everything. Um, and, you know, just kind of gives you less weight like I was talking about maybe more miles per gallon so that's good and it's budget friendly <laughs> all right so the first step is going to be to take this polycarbonate material and cut it you want to cut it about three inches shorter than the width of your panel so that you have a little bit of an area 
on the sides to put your T-track and to allow for some airflow. Also at some point you're going to cut three inches in the center. Um, so on the outside I've got 18 and a half inches, my panels are 21 and a half inches. Um, and then I cut three inches on center that goes almost all the way to the top um, to allow some airflow out the back of the solar panel. So when it's all said and done, these rails are going to sit on this outside portion that's cut and we're going to work on securing this polycarbonate material, whatever it's called, uh, to the back of the solar panel. I'm going to use some Sikaflex and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these lattice caps so that they fit nice and snug right here and give it a closed finish from the back. So I got a cut right here, but I also need to make a little indent right here um, where the rail is going to sit. You're also going to want to indent wherever you have this open airway at the back. So this cap, as weird as it looks and as hard as it was to get on, <laughs> it is really flush. So you can see that from the outside, it looks like um, it's protected from the wind and it won't lift up. So the next thing to do is put down your rails and then insert all your hardware and you're ready to go. Today's the day. So guys, you can check it out. <laughs> We've got our cable entry gun ready to go. We've got a little face that I drew on there. That's where I'm going to insert the eyes, the cables. <laughs> and it fits between the solar panels, which are going to be a little bit closer together. And then we're going to glue these down. Oh, there's still some holes. Alright, so now we are getting ready to put the solar panels down officially. I'm gonna start with these first two while the paint's drying. We're gonna work on gluing these little areas that really sit on a ridge. Some of these areas, it's not likely I'm gonna be able to glue. So just keep that for airflow. After the paint was dry, we filled the holes with rubber grommets that fits our solar 10 gauge wire perfectly. We decided to uh, crimp and um, get the MC4 connectors onto the panels before we put in this entry gland. Um, we just wanted to test it out. Might not be the easiest way to do it, but kind of avoided me from having to put some of these on up here. So now I'm going to pass them all through and glue this to the roof. Our solar panels are now 
done. We connected the cables on top of the roof and we intend to organize them better soon.